All right, everyone. Well, welcome to uh, Tim Time Projects. And today on Tim Time Projects, I'm going to work with these. All right, here's some crystals I have here. So here's the 1,000 kilohertz crystal. Well, it's a 1 megahertz crystal. That was from back in school when I was experimenting in school. And then here, I just got these recently when I was working on the Hammerlin the BFO, I kind of thought, well, I wonder if you could build your own BFO. So they were from Amazon, like $6 for like a million of them. And this was from the old CB days. I don't know what I took this out of, but it's a 27125. We're just going to play around with these a little bit, do a quick video, and just see what happens when we apply some signals to them and watch them on a scope. So stay tuned for the fun. All right, before I zoom you into the scope, what I have here is one of these crystals that I bought on Amazon. I got like 10 of them for $6 or something. And I have my scope connected, the hut connected to one side and the, uh, the plus from the signal generator connected to the other side. And then the two, the two grounds are connected together. So when I put a signal in from the signal generator at whatever the frequency of the crystal is, it should kind of show up on here that it's, it's resonating with it. So let's just see what happens. That's my theory. So what is it, 455? Uh, where is kilohertz? There it is. And I'm going to go with amplitude, like way down, maybe half a volt. 0.5 volts. We'll go with RMS. Doesn't matter. I mean, either way. So 500 millivolts RMS. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom you into the scope. All right, so now I'm going to start the frequency at 455 and see what we get. Okay. All right, so we'll start at 10 volts. And we'll zoom it in a little bit. I think I'm going to have to change my frequency a little bit too, aren't I? There we go. I don't know what the heck I was measuring before. All right, so now as I move up and down in frequency, that should increase and decrease. And when I think when it gets to its max height, then it should be at our at our resonant frequency. I started at 455 because that's what the crystal says, but I don't know if it's how accurate it is. So let's go back to frequency. We'll go up to or down. I don't know. There's 455. What the heck? Oh. 450. As I'm going down, that's 452. You can see it's getting smaller. Getting bigger. Bigger. That's 455 right there. A little bit bigger, 456. Whoa, 457, it's really big. 458, it's super big. Let me make this smaller. Four fifty nine, it goes away. Four fifty eight, it's back. Four fifty seven, it goes smaller. Fifty six. All right, four fifty eight. Four fifty 
is 459 and it's gone. So 458 seems to be about the best it does. Found, found an old crystal here that I took out of a CV radio. Uh, it's 27125. And for any of you guys that are older like me and were into the CV thing, you probably remember that frequency. That was channel 14. It seemed like everything came with channel 14. I don't really remember what this was out of, but it was it was soldered in. It looks like it pulled it out for some reason. So we'll take a look at this and see what we can we can glean with this. So let's go to we'll turn the output off and go to frequency twenty seven point one twenty five megahertz, and we'll watch here. Using about four volts peak to peak, we'll stay with that. And I just turned it off. Do try that again. Move this out of the way. Put this more so you can see it. All right, let's see. Clear, and let's turn our output on. So you can see something there. Let me. Get this up out of our way here. There we go. 127, 122 really brings it to life. And it's going away again. So let's see. We'll go this way. So it's getting bigger. So now we got to go this way. All right, so 127, yeah, 27, 122.5 is where it seems to be about the biggest. We got four volts going in, and coming out, we have two, four, six, eight, about almost 10 volts away from its limit. Is it, uh, frequency saying 27 point anything from 0.1 to 0.35, and uh. I think a lot of that comes from the fact that this isn't a very homogenous test setup. It's just a bunch of wires tied tied together, and there's no load on this capacitor. Or, uh, there's no load on this uh, crystal yellow thing. Okay, here we go. So I found another crystal here. I don't think you can't catch the the writing on it. But it is a 1,000 kilohertz. That would make it a 1 megahertz. I've had this one for a while. So let's just see what this one does. So I'll wire it the same way as the other one. Pretty much in series with my function generator. Let's connect the negatives together. The positive from function generator will go to one terminal. And the positive from the scope will go to the other terminal and I'll unhook from there. I'm working around the uh, the Hammerland just because it's such a big behemoth I don't have anywhere to put it. It's not really that big but yes it is. All right. So let's see what do we want to do here. I'm going to put it about four volts and We'll go to one megahertz. It's at one kilohertz, one megahertz. And we'll turn the output on. And let's see what we get. All right, so here we have a signal already. Make it a little bigger. It's telling, it's bouncing around between, it's right in the area of one megahertz, but it's like, 997. I don't know if you can really see that without me zooming in on just that. I'm trying to show you the the function generator as well. Uh, 
see when I move it around a little bit. Well, if we go to, that would be what, um, one, 10, 100. All right, so that would be one, one kilohertz if I go signal about goes away completely. If I go up, it goes away. So right about there. Let's see what else. I think I can go down into the hundreds of hertzes. Hundreds of hertzes. The hundred hertz. If I go off. Whoa, there we go. If I go up a little bit, look at that. Let me go. Give us a different scale to go by here. So that's one, two, three, four. That's on the 20 volt scale. So each one of these is 20 volts. It's 20, 40, 60, 80. And I'm putting four volts peak in, peak to peak. So I think that's probably not a really realistic number. Like, I don't think I could get shocked off of it. In fact, I'll try it. No. No. Let's see, I put my hands on it. And... I think it's just that uh, it acts in the properties of, of a uh, LC circuit almost. But I'm sure if I actually had it in a circuit, I wouldn't see anything at all like that. At best, I'd probably see something close to the 4 volts peak to peak. Um, let's just see if we get any better than that. Oh, going through, that's wrong way. So, it's about 100 hertz. Let's see if I can... Nope, wrong that. Alright, so we've discovered it's 1 megahertz and 90 hertz and from all the research I've done with that since this isn't the circuit and it's just merely tied together like that it's probably because of the, the loading on the uh, on the uh, crystal because I think you'll notice they were all off by not a lot, but an amount. But anyhow, the th interesting thing I found there was that uh, what I'm seeing here is that's quite a substantial increase in voltage. Interesting. That's, I think our next thing is we should probably build a uh, some type of a circuit. That's what I wanted to do is build a, a little oscillator circuit with these. That's why I got these little guys here. And uh, see how it behaves when it's in a circuit. I expect that it's going to behave similar but i don't think we'll see the quite the voltage like that and we might even see that the uh the frequency is a lot more in line with what's actually printed on it so anyhow that's that's my fun with crystals and uh, just something to do i've had so many other projects going on and working on the uh the hammerland uh and then the work around the farm and everything so that's it thanks for watching and uh, i'll try and get you something out with the hammerland soon Probably the alignment process. Take care.